the 2015 South Carolina Agribiz and Farm Expo, and of course there are a lot of exhibitors here. Um, and there are also some very special sponsors, and one of the title sponsors, of, and it has been a title sponsor for a number of years now, is John Deere. And joining us from John Deere is Anna Metcalf. It, Anna, it's good to see you again. Yeah, it's great to be back at the show and great to be back supporting South Carolina agriculture. Uh, well, it's wonderful to have you again. And, and I wanted to ask you um, in terms of, of what you do. I mean, we know John Deere supports a lot of farmers, um, but also, I mean, in, in terms of supporting their bodies, um, but also supporting um, ag events such as this. Tell us why you're here and, and what it is that John Deere is, is looking for in these sorts of events. Yeah, you know, we always love the chance to meet with our customers, get in front of our customers, and support agriculture in any way possible. If we didn't have their business, we wouldn't be a company, and we wouldn't have been a company for over 175 years. And so by being at this show, we really like to get in touch with our customers, hear what's going good for them, and hear what they might be having trouble with in, in this coming year. And especially with commodity prices down this year, we want to see what we can do to make their jobs easier, to make them more profitable, help them produce more, and make sure that they have the best information to make the best decisions for their business. And so this is a really great opportunity for us to get in touch with the Southeast and make sure that we're hearing what's going on with a lot of specialty crops that we don't see in the Midwest, you know, the peanuts, the cotton, the fruit and vegetables that just doesn't happen in the Midwest. And so we like to meet with these customers, see what we can do to help them out. And also it's a great opportunity to meet with different companies and hear what they're doing to help the industry as well as meet with a lot of students in the area. Wonderful. Now with the with the data that you use and the the data that you're able to get out to people and what they're able to get to you is that something that happens in-house at John Deere yes yeah, so with our uh, we call it the green on green advantage and so what that means is we have the receivers and the data monitors that you can put in your machines whether it's your tractor your combine your cotton picker and you can take that information and it goes back into my John Deere which is our in-house site that's on the cloud and in my John Deere you can have a variety of tools to analyze that data. You can do historical comparisons to see, was 2013 better than 2014? What did we do differently? What did we change? Was it variety? Was it soil conditions? So it really, it's something in-house that we do and our dealers are very up to speed and knowledgeable about the data because we know that farmers need that information in order to make better decisions and to make sure that they can have the lowest input costs possible yet still having the highest yields and the highest profits. And, and when you think about John Deere going back, what did you say, 175 years? Over, yep, we started in 1837. Okay, well, life has changed. <laughs> Just a little bit. And, and so t what, what was John Deere at the very beginning? Was it a tractor or no, was it something else? It was something else. So John Deere, uh, he's from Rutland, Vermont, and he moved out into Illinois when he was uh, a young man and he really, uh, started working with steel and so in the Midwest the soil is very rich and a lot of uh, producers were having trouble with the dirt sticking to their plow their little plow that they took with the draft horse down the field so he made a self-scouring plow that the dirt would flow right off of it in 1837 started John Deere I think the first year he sold you know 20 plows or so which is pretty pretty high since everything was made by by hand very manual and then we didn't actually start with tractors until we bought the Waterloo Boy tractor in the 1900s that was in Waterloo, Iowa, which is how we actually got the colors green and yellow as well. The Waterloo Boy tractors were green and yellow. Amazing. Yeah. What a story. Yeah. It, it, and I guess, you know, something had to start it. And, and then today to think about uh, what we see in terms of on the exhibit floor and, and out in the field there, but also what is going on within those, uh, within that machinery with the data collection and and helping people analyze how they're doing. Yeah, when it's it comes to a whole new world. Yeah, with data collection, then we also work, you know, with the regulations that are put in, with especially emissions regulations. So we had to reach that final tier four with our engines and make sure that we had clean clean emissions, that we were working hard to make sure that the environment's a, a safe place too for future generations. And, and what about the Farm Bill? Is there a connection between 
what John Deere is doing and how it may be able to help people work within the Farm Bill? Yeah, the Farm Bill is always important. Um, John Deere, we actually have a team that sits in Washington, D.C. that works with different senators and congressmen to help educate them about the issues that we're facing, whether it's um, even just cell towers. You know, those, those pieces of data need to get to the computer somehow, and it's through cell towers, or whether it's through environmental regulations that we're facing with pesticides and herbicides, or if it's, uh, you know, those emissions regulations. So the Farm Bill plays a huge part in what we're able to do, and it has a huge impact on those producers. And again, like I said, without those producers, we wouldn't have a company. So we need to make sure we're doing everything Thing that we can to help them. That is, it, it is amazing what's happening there. Now I know you're, you're we, we are continually looking at a turnover in population as populations age, and so there are a number of younger farmers coming on board, and perhaps people that are just interested in the field. Um, tell us what John Deere does in that regard, or if you're making a connection with the young farmers. Yeah, so, you know, the average age of the farmer currently is well into the 50s, and so we see a lot of the sons and daughters coming back now to help out with those family farms, and um, what we've noticed with that group is either they go to a two-year technical school, which we have uh, John Deere tech schools around the country that help students who want to be involved in like the mechanical side as well as work on their family farm so they might be a technician at a John Deere facility and then work on the family farm depending on the side so we reach out to those students as well as making sure that we have a presence at four-year universities so whether we have guest lecturers whether we have um, our precision technology equipment inside their classroom so that way they can see what our precision technology equipment looks like and then also just making sure that we see them at these farm shows. We're involved in Farm Bureau. We're involved in a lot of organizations that these students might be involved with. Um, at a high school level, we're involved with FFA. So we're at national convention. We're at local state conventions, doing everything we can to touch those students, reach those students, and make sure that they understand that you know we're here to support agriculture. It doesn't matter what color you run, if you're a mixed, whatever. We just want to support the industry because we know how important it is. And, and the other thing about the industry that, is, that has changed, it, it seems, it seems like we're going through a, a different, uh, a pendulum change of, um, from the small farm to the large farm, and now we're in a sort of a hybrid of having both um, medium, small, large, and all. And it's a wonderful thing to see the, come on board. What does that mean in terms of, of equipment sales? Yeah, so um, the great thing about farm sizes is that we have something for every farmer out there. Whether you're looking for used equipment, we have certified pre-owned equipment. So it goes through rigorous testing from the dealership. Even though somebody owned it before, it goes through rigorous testing, makes sure that it meets a lot of qualifications. So that way, maybe a farmer who only has 500 acres can still have something that's great and a, a great addition to their farm. And then, like you said, some of those larger farms that have maybe a few more resources can purchase those newer pieces of equipment and make sure that they have the latest and greatest for their needs. So I grew up on a small family farm um, in upstate New York, and so my dad does used equipment. And so he uh -huh. still works with our John Deere dealer, still gets the great support that he's looking for, but doesn't have something that's fresh off the line. Right. So we really do have something for every size farm out there, just depending on what their needs are, what their horsepower needs are, but with our John Deere dealer network, they still get the support that they're expecting, and they still get treated like a very important customer. Wonderful. Now, I have to ask you before I let you go, it would be blasphemy if, if there were anything other than a green and yellow John Deere tractor. Has there ever been any other John Deere color of John Deere tractor uh, built. You know, there are a few colors that happened back in, I think, the 40s and the early 50s where there were yellow, there were some that were just different colors. Lawn mowers, when we had those in the 60s and 70s, you could right. purchase those in different colors. Um, mm -hmm. So there has been a few, but green and yellow is always the standard. We, yeah, we know we know what it is <laughs> when we see that green and yellow, and it's, it's a wonderful uh, sight to see because there is some uh, reminiscence of of history and culture that go along with that. That's right. Well, it's been a pleasure talking with you, Anna Metcalf, with John Deere. Thank you very much. We're glad to be here. I've been speaking with Anna Metcalf, and she is with John Deere.